What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Yesterday, Sony shocked everyone online when they made an announcement for Concord that, well, the game was being shut down completely. And in fact, they had a plan for people who have purchased the game now. And this of course brings up a ton of questions around the idea of Concord. Can it be reinvented? What does this mean with some of their other agreements outside of gaming? And what does it mean for Firewalk and even Sony's future live service plans? Again, a lot to go over here, but we're gonna touch on all of that here today. And also we're gonna be talking about some actual good news for Microsoft because it appears Capcom, well, they started to figure things out with one of those fighting game collections and that could actually be really good going forward for some of the others. So if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps it a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And of course, members to the channel do get Newswave early. If you'd like to learn more about that, click the join button down below this video. And we're gonna start today with Xbox Game Pass games to start off the month of September. This will be wave one posted over on their website. We can see that. And starting at the top, these are games that are available right now in Game Pass with Star Trucker, that's cloud, console, and PC. And then Age of Mythology Retold, cloud, PC, and Xbox Series X and S that is available day one, so it did just release and going into the service. Then starting September 5th, so tomorrow, Expeditions, a Mud Runner game, cloud, console, and PC. September 11th, we have Riders Republic, cloud, console, and PC. And then September 17th, we have Train Sim World 5, cloud, console, and PC. You know, I am a bit curious about Age of Mythology Retold because I played that game way back in the day. It was like, what, two decades ago now, which is crazy to really think about that, right? I remember specifically really getting into it, playing it, trying it out. And I had been a big fan of the original Age of Empires, and that was kind of it. But still, uh, going back to Age of Mythology, checking it out would be fun. And I, I mean, I really didn't check out Age of Empires on the Xbox console, just on PC, even the newer one. So I'm kind of curious to see how it even function with the controller itself. But not the strongest lineup necessarily to start off September. However, again, this is wave one and many more games should be following as we go through the month. Also, the discussion around Black Myth Wukong and the timed exclusivity or not timed exclusivity deal with Sony continues on with the latest outlet to throw their hat in the ring being Eurogamer. We can see this over on their site where they say news journalists with good track records have corroborated the Sony exclusivity angle. And to be clear, we've heard the same ourselves from sources with good knowledge of the situation. So it does make me wonder if these sources are just from within Sony at this point. I don't really know if any of them are necessarily talking to game science, but Sony we've seen, of course, all kinds of leaks and information come out of there with these different outlets. And the, the thing that's really weird to me is it just seems to be this discussion around exclusivity. And if that really is the case, and I mean, we've seen it with Sony before, so it's not shocking to think that, yeah, they could have made some kind of deal, even if it's not just complete, oh, we're going to buy timed exclusivity, but we're also going to provide resources to help you get this game out the door. That's something we've seen before as well. So it, it seems to be something that people are really keeping their eye on. And I just don't know if we're ever necessarily going to get a definitive statement from Sony or Game Science or even Microsoft at this point, because they just keep rewriting and rewording their original PR statement every time an outlet asks them. Oh, and we did get a new trailer for Mario and Luigi Brothership, which you can see some of it here, and it's uh, very uh, unfortunate or just, like, I mean, just coincidental wording around this one because they start off by saying, greetings from Concordia, wish you were here, which again, we'll be getting into Concord here in a moment, but I mean, this game itself, I, I know people, obviously the Mario and Luigi franchise are just excited to see it continue on here with a brand new entry, not like a remake, remaster, nothing like that. And I, I will say the art style was the only thing that really was throwing me off a bit. And I, I do like it. it. It looks kind of blurry at times, but other times, like, are they specifically aiming for that? I, I'm just interested in checking out a new Mario and Luigi game and it is coming out November 7th. So either way, I think this is one that you probably have to see outside of the typical Twitter or YouTube compression because I have a feeling it's going to look really, really good on, on, for example, on OLED right in front of you. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with an announcement from Sony and a decision that people online are calling unprecedented, shocking. It's, it is a very weird thing to see right now. And it does kind of showcase, I feel like just the landscape right now of these live service games in that most of them fail. Even if you have say a big time publisher, or even a platform holder, 
behind you. But let's take a look. This is over on PlayStation Blog. Now, this was issued by Ryan Ellis, who's the game director at Firewalk Studios, saying, while many qualities of the experience resonated with the players, they're talking about Concord here, we also recognize that other aspects of the game and our initial launch didn't land the way we'd intended. Therefore, at this time, we have decided to take the game offline beginning September 6th, 2024, and explore options, including those that will better reach our players. While we determine the best path ahead, Concord sales will cease immediately, and we will begin to offer a full refund for all gamers who have purchased the game for PS5 or PC. If you purchase the game for PlayStation 5 from the PlayStation Store or PlayStation Direct, a refund will be issued back to your original payment method. Now, if you are someone who has bought a physical copy, mostly from like retail stores or I guess technically Amazon or if it's been, if you bought it in person, it seems like you're gonna have to go back to that specific retail store. And I guess they got word from Sony and can issue the refund right then and there. Otherwise though, online that can be of course a whole hassle with shipping and stuff. I'm not really sure how that's going to be worked out in that situation, but at least if you bought it, say on the PlayStation store, all of that is already in the system and being taken care of. And again, again this is a, uh, this is unprecedented, as people have mentioned. It's, um, I think this is a bit more of a reaction than even I was expecting. I did bring up the idea on the podcast a couple of weeks ago when the numbers started to first come out that they could actually go this route because they maybe sold 15 or 20,000 copies at most. And for Sony, looking at what they have in front of them and the amount of money it's going to take to continue this roadmap, employing obviously the, the large number of developers that are working on it, the very talented developers at Firewalk that really didn't have a game with Concord catching on to the audience, not necessarily because of the underlying technical side of the game, but more or less just everything around that that was very, very uninteresting. So instead of continue down that path, they decided to really cut cut things off right here, bring it back in, and then decide which way to go. Now, again, September 6th is when the official cutoff date is, and it seems right now people are jumping online who did buy Concord, and they're working to farm experience so that they can try to get what may end up being the rarest platinum trophy on the console. So if you do jump on to play Concord, specifically on PS5, it seems, you're gonna notice that people in a lot of these matches are doing very weird things. And most of it amounts to them just trying to gain experience, I guess bump up their level, and get all of the trophies that are left for them right now on the way for that Platinum. But now, of course, the question becomes, what happens to Concord and what happens to Firewalk? Well, I, I guess we could start with Concord. When they, they're bringing it back in-house, what do they do with it? Well, clearly they can scrap the whole thing and have Firewalk move on. And yes, that most likely will result in people on Concord or people behind Concord at Firework who are working on that project to be laid off as they essentially reshuffle and prepare maybe for their next project. Sony could also just completely shut down Firewalk, which I don't know if I would go that route. I, I think they can still put out a good game if, uh, if maybe they have a better idea necessarily than the narrative experience they had in place for a Concord with some of those, some of those characters. And the, the big question to me is, let's say they do reinvent the game. They go down that path. You know what? We can work this out. We have a lot of feedback from the two weeks it was on the market. And then of course the beta period and the early access. Sure. We, we reinvent the thing. Do you still call it Concord? Because I feel like you can't. Like, I think the branding is pretty much done. Like, you cannot reintroduce it with that name. It's got to be called something else. And to me, at that point, you may as well just start overhauling the vast majority of the game until it doesn't even look like what we had previously with Concord. I think it would still be a hero shooter, but I feel like the path forward, and again, I've mentioned this a couple of times now, is if you're going to do a hero shooter, you need to do what Marvel's Rivals has done, which is they have established intellectual properties that are very popular, and they've worked that in as the different characters you pick to play as in their hero shooter. Sony can do that with PlayStation characters. Yes, it would probably take a year or two to overhaul and reinvent the thing, but I do feel like that has a much better chance on the open market compared to Concord. They would also probably have to go free to play, which I think they understand that now in that sector after what we just saw. Now there is one other wrinkle in this whole situation as, well, a certain series with Amazon coming up before the end of this year, Secret Level, is going to have an entire episode seemingly based around Concord. That's gonna be a very awkward thing to air and I, I don't know, I guess they're still gonna 
going to do. I mean, it's, it should be done by now if it's going to show up on Amazon's streaming service here in the next couple of months. So we, that's going to be weird, but maybe they can play it off as, hey, remember Concord? Here's a whole episode about all the characters you didn't really care about. But still, that we'll, we'll, I guess, cross that bridge when we get to it. That is if Amazon even airs the episode anyway. But looking forward from that, what happens to Firewalk now? Because I, I think that's a fair question. What happens with Sony's live service endeavors? I think those are still unfazed at this point because really, if you look at it from their angle, they're one and one. Helldivers 2 was a resounding success for them, okay? Well, now we see Concord was not. It kind of evens out. In fact, you can even look at Helldivers 2 and say, yeah, Concord cost a lot of money, but Helldivers 2 made enough money to make up both for Helldivers 2 and Concord's development, and then some. So now they're looking towards fair games. Will that do well? <laughs> That's We'll see, because the initial impression that I've, I've at least gathered online is that the first trailer we've seen, again, all cinematic, really, hasn't exactly excited people. But... At this point, Payday 3 fell flat on his face, so if it can be just a much better Payday 3 and slot in there to take over, it could actually find some success. At the very least, it should last more than two weeks, I think. As for Firewalk, it really is difficult to tell. As I mentioned, this is typically the thing that would just sink an entire studio, and it very well could with Firewalk, but I, I kind of feel like Sony may have bought them for something other than just Concord, as in they like the talent there, they like the leadership, there's more to it than just Concord. Because they could have just contracted this thing out and called it a day as probably Monsters originally had own fi own Firewalk, and maybe they figured there's more to, to what Firewalk can do outside of just Concord. And here's hoping because uh, Concord's not exactly pulling its weight for the amount of money it costs to keep Firewalk upright. So we'll see what happens going forward, but... Again, shocking stuff. I don't think it would have been surprising if Sony showed up and said, you know what, we're going to go free to play with Concord and see what happens or had some other response, some other update, some other plan. Not necessarily just, yeah, we're, we're shutting this thing down and we're refunding everyone and you may or may not see Concord again in the future. Just surprising stuff, unprecedented right now in gaming. Next up, let's talk about some actual good news for Microsoft as it has seemed like a lot of bad news for the, the company and their console. Well, now it seems like Capcom has all of a sudden figured things out, which we can see this is post up. This one is over on the Marvel Capcom official account saying we're excited to announce that after technical discussions with our partners at Microsoft, we can confirm that Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics will release on Xbox One. The Xbox One version will be out in 2025, so please stay tuned for more information. Now, if you remember, this was, go this was originally just coming out on PlayStation 4, on Switch, uh, on PC, but there was no Xbox version. Version. There's also no PlayStation 5 version, and why is that? Well, obviously PS4 through backwards compatibility, but also with apparently what's been going on with Capcom is they've been using MT Framework for a lot of this stuff, and the pipeline was not there, according to sources with Microsoft, and based on them saying technical issues or situation, yeah, that sort of lines up, but I guess Microsoft worked with Capcom pretty quickly, all things considered, with how long it tends to take for things like these in development and the business side to get done, so that it will come out in 2025. The unfortunate thing is, obviously, that this is coming out starting September 12th, so in less than two weeks, and I feel like most people who want this game, this collection, will probably be buying it then, and then might even opt in for a physical copy a couple of months later, because... We've seen Marvel vs. Capcom 2 get delisted already. I don't think anyone's going to take any chances here. They're going to play it safe and at least secure a, a physical copy, whether it's on PlayStation or on the Switch. And that is my plan, get it digitally, because I do get a kick out of Marvel vs. Capcom 2, even though I'm not very good at it necessarily. It was still awesome back in the, on the, the day on the Dreamcast, having that massive cast of characters going through the single player and then buying each character at the shop. And back then, being surprised as to who showed up, because imagine playing through that game, not knowing who's even in it, not necessarily outside of obviously the characters on the cover and some of the initial ones that were unlocked, but then to go through and randomly see them just appear in the shop. It, it was really fun back then to not have everything basically ruined by not only just the internet, but also trailers from some of these companies that they uh, put out. But this is good, obviously, going forward for Xbox and some of Capcom's future endeavors, like that awesome Fighting Collection 2 that had Power Stone in it. That's another one I expect to be making the jump over now to the Xbox. And 
since it's not coming out to next year anyway, might be more launch aligned than what we're seeing with the current Marvel vs. Capcom collection. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about what else, but more layoffs in the gaming industry. And this has almost become just an entire segment, recurring segment in this show seemingly every single week, sometimes multiple times a week. This time though, coming from Ballistic Moon. Now this is the studio behind the Until Dawn remake that is coming out October 4th, so about a month from now. And we can see this statement that they issued over on LinkedIn, where they say, it is with deep regret and a heavy heart that we must make the tough decision to significantly scale down our team to secure the future of our studio. This comes after our development of Until Dawn for PS5 and PC. We are profoundly sorry for the impact this restructuring will have on our employees and their families. As we navigate this transition, Ballistic Moon remains focused on uh, supporting the launch of Until Dawn and is committed to exploring new opportunities and collaborations for the future. So what this tells me, or at least seemingly from the outside looking in, is that with Until Dawn Remake coming up, they don't really have much that would be in full scale production after that. So, I mean, at that point they're looking around like, well, we can't support all these employees. So after Until Dawn Remake is out, we would be in a lot of trouble in terms of cost versus revenue. And that's typically why you see layoffs like these. Obviously it's the biggest expense that these companies can easily control, which means the, yes, many people end up losing their jobs like we're seeing here. But it, it is interesting with Ballistic Moon because I, I figured Sony working, we assume, on something new for Until... Like, doing this Until Dawn remake, I think it makes sense to do it if you also have Until Dawn 2 coming up at some point. And, I mean, it seems like Ballistic Moon would probably have some kind of hand in that, even, even if they collaborated with other studios or Sony themselves. So, to get this message is, uh, is odd with Until Dawn remake coming up here soon. We, of course, know that they are doing a movie for this. Like, it seems like Sony is trying to build Until Dawn up, so the, the getting this message from Ballistic Moon did throw me off a bit, especially since the game technically isn't even out yet. Not necessarily in the level that we just saw with Visions of Mana, but still them shedding staff ahead of this release is, uh, it's, it's troubling. We've seen the industry go through a lot of these, uh, a lot of these situations over the last, uh, what, 18 months or so, and we've said it many times, it just seems like it's getting worse and worse, and this, just the latest example of that. And before we go to the comments of the day, we'll take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I ask, did you buy Concord? Okay, 99% say no. Look at this, 1% say yes. Now, some of you in the comments are asking why did I run this poll? Well, to be honest, I was trying to give Concord a W on the way out, be the only poll, the only question we've asked that people could vote on that would have a unanimous choice. And look, you run polls with thousands of people, but this one had, what, 28,000 people voted. You're gonna get votes for all the different options. Guys, we were so close, Concord was almost there, so close to being the only game that no one bought, <laughs> at least in the, in the poll. So close. 1% though did buy it. And uh, well, they're probably just gonna go ahead and get a refund for it, most likely. Although, will that end up being a big collector's item? Time will tell, but probably not. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day, as you're seeing here. This is from Undead Collector, says the 2% on Tony Hawk 5 are the sad people that only played this game of the series. You know, I stopped and I thought about this a moment and I said, okay, hold on. Well, let's take a look at some of the, the releases here that happened for Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Well, then I looked down the list and I said, oh wow, there is a fairly large gap between something like, uh, like Project 8 and like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5. And I mean, there's also Proving Ground, that was in 2007. But between 5 and Proving Ground, that's 2007 to 2015, that is eight years. And it was Ride and Shred and Pro Skater HD. And I'm thinking, wow, if all the all the younger generation that came in at the like the like towards the middle of the PS3 and the 360 and then found Pro Skater 5 to kick off the Xbox One and the PS4. Ah, that, that, that's rough. You, they missed greatness, okay? Because something like Pro Skater 2 or Pro Skater 3 needs to be experienced if you've played Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 because afterwards you'll just throw 5 directly in the trash. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for News Wave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. If you missed yesterday's News Wave, I will have it up here in a card for you to check out. Or maybe you wanna see what a next generation PlayStation 2 memory card looks like and 
what it can do, I'll have that right below it. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.